I've got two newly released alto sax mouthpieces to show you and play for you. One is the new Selmer Paris Jazz Flow, and the other is the new Meyer Brothers New York Connoisseur Series. Let's hear the jazz flow first. <laughs> The Selmer Jazz Flow comes in two tip openings and so far is only available for alto saxophone. As of today, the price is $210 on Sweetwater. I'm playing a Better Sax Jazz Cut 2.5 reed and the saxophone is a soon to be released Better Sax Session. This mouthpiece has something I've never seen before. Check out how the shank is cut at an angle. I don't know why they opted for this design while I think it looks kind of cool. I wonder if it has any impact, positive or negative, on how the mouthpiece plays. I'm guessing it was done for more of an aesthetic reason, but if anyone knows otherwise, please let us know in the comments. Another thing to note about this mouthpiece is that the rails are quite thick. For reference, have a look compared to a number of other pro-level mouthpieces. The sidewalls are mostly straight, but round into the baffle. The chamber is like a rounded horseshoe, since the bottom side is flattened. It has a low baffle, and you can see some machine marks on the inside, which tells us that it's made using a CNC machine. And at the tip, you can see that there is probably a small amount of hand finishing where you can see it's been smoothed out. Let me know what you think about the Summer Jazz Flow in the comments, and check the description for a link in case you want to order one. While I had a good impression at first, I did notice that the lower register does not speak as clearly as I would like. <laughs> As you can see, the chamber is quite small, and that can lead to less bottom end and the impression of more resistance when you play. I think that you'll hear that difference right away compared to this next mouthpiece, the Meyer Brothers Connoisseur Series. <laughs> This particular design is based on Cannibal Adderley's New York Meyer mouthpiece. Cannibal had a brass ring fitted onto his mouthpiece because of a crack, and they've made that part of the design here. Like with the Selmer shank, this is probably mostly aesthetic and doesn't have a huge impact on the sound, but I think the brass ring on the shank is very cool looking. <laughs> As you can see, the chamber is a lot larger than the jazz flow and the baffle is low like on typical Myers. The rails are nice and thin. You can see the markings on the inside that indicates a significant amount of hand finishing. I've actually been to the JJ Babbitt factory where they make these and I've seen the whole process. Yes, a very cool video about that will be coming soon. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it. And it's important to point out that while these two mouthpieces are both made out of hard rubber, the process is quite different for each one. The Selmer piece is made in the modern way using a CNC lathe, which basically takes a piece of hard rubber and cuts it into the shape. The Myers are made the old school way by taking squares of raw rubber and heating them up around a mold. You can get great results with both methods. In the end, it really comes down to how good the design is and how meticulous you are in making them. And of course, a lot comes down to personal preference. What kind of sound and response are you looking for? The Meyer Brothers Connoisseur Series Alta Mouthpiece comes in four tip openings, five, six, seven, and eight, and costs quite a bit more. As of today, it's $366 on Sweetwater.com. I have to say that out of the three Meyer mouthpieces I have, this is the best one. I'm getting a very even sound in all registers. The tone is on the darker side, but with a nice amount of edge in it. This mouthpiece is a good choice for anyone who plays jazz and wants that classic sound. These also come with a Bernard style ligature, similar to something that Cannibal used to use. Now I want to play for you my personal mouthpiece, the Better Sags Burnin, for reference and context. 
This mouthpiece is also hard rubber and made using a CNC lathe. It has extensive handwork done afterward though, so you don't see any machine marks on it. It's got a thin tip and side rails, straight sidewalls, a prominent rollover baffle going into a medium large chamber. As you can hear, it's a little brighter than the Meyer, which for me makes it a bit better suited for contemporary styles of music while still retaining the warmth and roundness you want for traditional jazz. As of right now, the Burnin for Alto is $249 in Sweetwater. Getting new mouthpieces is fun, although it can get a bit expensive. It's important to always remember that you are the instrument and the sound you're going to produce is mainly a product of what you listen to and how much you practice. Having a good mouthpiece will make things easier and the time you spend playing more enjoyable. Now, go watch this video next to learn more about mouthpieces.